I call the Henry County School Board meeting to order. This time we will have our roll call. Mr. Arker? Here. Mrs. Durden? Here. Mrs. Flanagan? Here. Mr. Gravely? Here. Mr. Martin? Here. And Mrs. Whitlock? Here. We have an empty chair. A chair that used to be filled with a very, uh, very vibrant, man who had wisdom and strength to carry on the responsibilities of being on this board. We lost him this week very quickly. Uh, we didn't have time to say our goodbyes, but we know that he's in a far better place than we are. I worked with Mr. Zare. I loved his humor and I loved his A to Z. If you want to know what that is, uh, you can ask any members of the school system and they will be able to tell you. Mr. Zare was a very practical individual. He was always working for the students of Henry County, for the teachers of Henry County, and for the administrators. I personally will miss him because we worked together as teachers and uh, there were times that I didn't always get his joke. There were times that I just had to simply say, okay. We lift him up this morning. He's not here in person, but he is here in spirit. And for that reason, we are going to be able to endure and move on with the work that is before us. Thank you, Mr. Zare, for all your kindness and your love and all of your humor. At this time, I need to have the approval of the agenda. Mrs. Flanagan made the motion. Mr. Martin second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We would like to welcome all of the visitors here this morning. We hope that as you have come to recognize what the school board does, and also uh, we want to be excited about your awards as well. So thank you all for being here this morning. Would you please stand? And as we do that, we do a silent prayer. Please remember Karen and Ryan and the others uh, of Mr. Zare's family. Let us pray. Assuming that no one has signed up to speak this morning, so we will move on to awards and recognitions. Mrs. Adger. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. We are excited this morning to recognize two different student achievements today. The first, I'm going to ask Ms. Donna Hicks from Career Academy to join me in sharing with you. Um, Code VA is a state organization. And they have a special award to share with one of our students, Logan Serber. So, Logan, if you'll also come forward, Ms. Hicks is going to share a little bit about what Code VA is all about and what Logan did to earn our certificate as well as a laptop from Code VA. Uh, Code VA is a fantastic partner for computer science in uh, the whole state. Um, they had a contest in the spring. It was, um, you had to create a data selfie. 
and you had to think about privacy and how you share your information. And the challenge was, how do you share information without you know, putting it out there and making it really obvious and oversharing? Um, and Logan uh, has been in my class for two semesters. She's taken cybersecurity fundamentals and cybersecurity manufacturing. And she entered the contest and drew a self-portrait. And I hate that I don't have it to show you. We'll share it with you later. Um, and she used binary code around her face to describe her characteristics and aspects about her. Uh, so ones and zeros. And it looked just like her. She's quite the artist as well as the computer scientist. <laughs> so uh, it, she had ones and zeros around everything and it actually codes to describe characteristics about her. So she was sharing without obviously sharing uh, and she won for the entire state. Um, I don't know how many submissions there were, but she, we got uh, recognition towards the end of the school year that hers was the winner for the state. So we're very proud of her. She is a, a great computer scientist-minded student, and we look forward to seeing great things come from her in that field. Would you like to share anything? No, that's pretty much <laughs> So look for her to go to do something great in the career field at the end of next school year. We also have a group of students from Magna Vista High School with us this morning who have achieved at the state level for FFA. So I'm going to ask their instructors to come forward and help as we give them our achievement honors, but I want to read their name and their state achievement to you as they receive their certificates from their instructors. All right, third place vet science at the state level, Claudia Phillips, Emma Nestor, Cooper Owen, Justin Ford. And we're gonna ask you guys just to stay on stage until the whole group is there. Third place food science, FFA at the state level, Jasmine Diaz Trinidad, Casey Mead, Jackson Shively, Kasha Cox, fifth place nursery landscaping state FFA recognition, Shelby Rigney, Tucker Roach, Delaney Burris, and Grayson Lawson. Tenth place livestock judging state FFA recognition, Avery Brown, Sadie Perry, Austin Gammons, and Haley Chitwood. Tenth place floriculture state FFA honors. Mallory Kazor, Abby Moxley, Jordan Beal, and Addison Bryan. Twenty fifth place in the Hippology category, Maggie Brown and Claudia Phillips. Oh, I'm sorry, Kimberly Davis. <laughs> And now for Claudia. So we have some students who are standing in front of you who are actually graduates and they competed after graduation. They all earned state FFA degrees. And so the first person on that list is Claudia Phillips, then also Cooper Owen, Sadie Perry, and Avery Brown. So we'd like to congratulate them for that. All right, you guys, and I know you couldn't do it without your instructors, so I'm going to ask you to get into two rows, and then we're going to have them join you for your picture.
This time we will take a five minute break. Hi, Barry Nelson at GR Chevrolet in Stanley Town. We've got a brand new 2022 GMC Canyon AT4. That's hard to come by. Got two of these in stock. Brand new 2022 Silverado. Hard to come by. Come get it at GR Chevrolet. You want a good payment and a great price? Got a 2020 Silverado double cab here at GR Chevrolet. A brand new 2022 GMC Duramax AT4 four wheel drive double cab. That's what the world's looking for. Only at GR Chevrolet. Got a 2014 Silverado lifted with all the bells and whistles. Big boy toy. Only at GR Chevrolet. Come get it. And we've got trucks here at GR Chevrolet. We've got over 135 used pickups to choose from. Come see us. we got more trucks than General Motors. Maybe not. Come see us at GR Chevrolet where everybody knows cars cost less. We've been here for 25 years now and we built a building that was bigger than what we needed when we, when we first started. We've just about filled that place now. One of the things that we really do is we value our employees. We know it takes a long time for them to learn the skills, but people's skills are hard earned. So we make sure that there is a job for them every day of the week, 52 weeks of the year. So even if we're quiet and we don't need people, a lot of businesses still lay people off, send people home. We don't do that. If you want to come to work, we will find you a job because we value the skills that you've learned with us and we want you to stay here and we want you to feel valued. And we want you as a family to go home and think, I'm always going to get a paycheck if I turn up to work for Drake. This time we are on uh, the consent agenda. Is there anything in the consent agenda that we need to pull out? If not, I'll take a uh, motion to approve. Second. Okay. Ms. Whitlow made the motion. Ms. Flanagan second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, it is approved. We're now on to the action agenda. This is approval of updates to certain VSBA school board policies and regulations on second reading. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. We did share proposed policy revisions during the information session at the July board meeting. The revisions reflect efforts to bring policies and regulations into compliance with new or existing laws, or they've been revised for editorial reasons. Policy revisions were recommended and verified for legality by the Virginia School Boards Association. The revisions are presented as a second reading and it is recommended that the revisions be approved as presented. Anyone have any questions? Then I need a motion to accept. Mr. Um, Mr. Gravely made the motion. Ms. Flanagan second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, the next is the superintendent's report. Yes, good morning, um, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I will go ahead and let Ms. Fulcher play our highlight video. This the edition of superintendent's highlights feature the events through the summer, preparing for the start of the school year in the area of high quality instruction. Classroom teachers from around the division participated in a variety of workshops to prepare for high quality instruction in the fall and spring semesters. Social studies teachers learned more about the inquiry design model that they'll be using with students and English teachers participated in the Piedmont Arts Workshop learning more about poetry instruction. In the area of high quality professionals, Finance team members have been reviewing contracts, setting up payroll, and preparing to assist support groups for the new school year. The human resources team has been supporting substitute orientation, new teacher orientation, and onboarding new employees. We were excited to welcome new elementary, middle, and high school teachers at new teacher orientation. 
new area of safe and innovative learning, a new work order system has been instituted, transportation team members have moved to their new office and garage space, which is centrally located. HVAC and boiler upgrades took place at FC and Center for Community Learning. Camel Court received an outdoor facelift. Floors have been polished in preparation for new visitors and students. Ninth grade iPads have been set up and distributed to schools. New Promethean boards have been installed around the division. A water heater replacement took place at Magna Vista. Mulching has been completed on several elementary playgrounds. There's an upgraded parking lot space at Bassett High School. Teacher of the Year classrooms at Career Academy, FC, and Ball Park have received upgrades, and furniture has been removed and replaced with upgraded items in classrooms around the division. In the area of family and community engagement, upgraded signage has been provided to schools around the division, and power school enrollment and system integration work has been completed. As you can see, summer has prepared us for an inspired school year. So we are very excited to get back to school. Um, as you know, there's a lot of work that goes on and we would ask for more and more time to prepare. Uh, the summer seems to go by very quickly each year, but I would like to remind everybody, since we have people listening and the media here again, that uh, volunteers are welcome in the school, that to remember that to be a volunteer you have to get a background check, which can take some time, so please go ahead and start that process as soon as possible. Um, also, the importance of being involved in your child's education and as a community, we want to thrive and, and that does entail us all being involved in, you know, the old saying, it takes a village, that we want the community and parents to be involved with their, their children and what they're doing in schools. Uh, and then just to be mindful of the patience that our staff has had with us, that our students have had and our parents are going to continue to have because we are still, have, we still have vacancies. Uh, we are still asking people who are interested in teaching and driving a bus uh, and be serving as a paraprofessional in, in our schools to take a look at our um, list of jobs that are available and if interested, please apply. Uh, substitutes are very, very valuable and, uh, and I was asked uh, again yesterday as I traveled around the county, do you have to have a bachelor's degree to be a substitute? And uh, so you do not have to have a bachelor's degree. You do have to have a, you have to be 18. Uh, you have to have a background check and the drug screen to, to become a substitute. Uh, and there's an onboarding process through HR, but you do not have to have a bachelor's degree <coughs> in order to be a um, substitute or anything. Just high school diploma. High school diploma. High, high school diploma. Or GED. Or GED, yes. So uh, we hope that people will take interest in, and become a sub, and I know several of you have served in those positions and know that um, it's very rewarding to be a substitute. And um, and also I'd like to take this time, as Mr. Alker says, as excited as we are about school starting, that uh, you know it is, a, it is also a very sad time for school to start. Mr. Zayer was very excited about school starting and, and getting back to some normalcy, and um, uh, you know he couldn't wait for the uh, Friday night football games uh, to start, but he had recently said that to me. Uh, and I would say that as a student, I first met Mr. Zayer uh, in eighth grade, got to know him very well in eighth grade. We all knew who he was, but as you entered eighth grade, he always said, this is World G with a big Z. And I know almost everybody who went through our school system at some point had Mr. Zayer, many people who sit in the room had Mr. Zayer as a teacher. And I remember him saying that, and as he so affectionately called himself the Big Z over the years. Uh, but you know, he taught us all about civic duty and civics and world geography, and then he carried that out by serving the, the board of supervisors and the school board, and uh, continued. But uh, I, and and as Mr. Alper said, his most proud topic was to talk about his lovely wife Karen Zayer and his uh, three children, you know, uh, Tanya, Ryan, and Kyle, and the grandkids. So. Just want to say that yes, Mr. Zayer, um, you know we're we're sad um, to hear his his passing. And if you all have any other questions, I'm happy to answer those. Just for the record, you mentioned volunteers. Are we still paying for X amount of volunteers per school? I'm gonna let Ms. Lane because she's been uh, she can give you an update on where we are. I'm not sure we have a lot of people. We we actually um, have 
have uh, repurposed of those free background checks over the last several years. So the school division does still continue to provide um, 100 free background screens, um, but we actually use those for volunteer coaches at the secondary schools, both middle schools and high schools, because it's so important to get those coaches in. Um, and they're volunteering their time, so we don't want them to have to pay for the background screens. Uh, we also use them for um, background screens for support group members who are holding office, officer positions, so the top five officer positions for um, parent-teacher organizations or other support groups. And then we're also using them um, for free screens for student teachers and interns because that also helps us uh, with recruiting teachers you know as they complete their teacher preparation programs if we can get them in to do um, their student teaching in our schools okay so is that something we need to in the future look at increasing from a financial standpoint budgeting more money <laughs> at this point no but if we see uh, you know a major issue with the number you know, we can talk. We will surely keep the board informed on how many volunteers. I think. I think Mrs. Verlick is. Is she doing most of the volunteers? Yes. Time? Yes. Tanya Verlick, uh, Human Resources mm -hmm. Coordinator, handles all the volunteer process. So we will update you all on how many we have and, and how many slots we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Okay. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying. You know, of course, we're looking for volunteers and large percentage of it you know we talk about parental involvement we don't want to be a deterrent if we we know we can't finance all of them but you know we could budget x amount of dollars for you know several volunteers in our schools then i think it'd be worth it just quickly echo the information that you Mr. Gravely, it's, it's one thing for us to ask people to help us out, it's another to ask them to pay us to do. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? I'll take a motion to accept the superintendent's report. We don't have to do that. Okay. Any matters from the board? Do you want to start? you have any? I will start right. with our new member. I just want to welcome everybody back to school. I hope that everybody is excited as I am. I went to Magna Vista yesterday as a parent, and I saw a lot of smiles and excitement from the teachers, so I'm prayerful that that continues. Um, and I just want to thank the maintenance department. I think the superintendent's report shows just how much was done this summer, and they are still working very hard. Mm -hmm. Is there an update on positions that are still available, or are we? <laughs> I, I look at this landing because I do know that we had one. Test and I know it changes yesterday. daily. Yes, right. Yeah, it changes daily. And But just to know that we might have something in place today, but it can so quickly change, and then classes mm -hmm. have to be moved around. And so just for the community to be understanding in that, that is a process, and y'all are still I'm sure taking it on and going each day. We we are. Um, the, the labor shortage continues to impact us as it does all school divisions and all employers at this time. Um, our our licensed positions are, are in much better shape uh, than they were, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Um, we do still have some licensed vacancies. Um, we are, are seeking to either fill or find long-term substitutes or, or other solutions for those. Um, if, if anyone is interested in teaching middle school, we do have a few middle school opportunities um, as well as special education. Um, and so we're, we're trying to get all of that in place, uh, you know, within the next few days. And then um, we do have quite a few classified vacancies. So if anyone is looking for paraprofessional positions, bus driver positions, or any of those other roles, um, we have quite a few to fill still. But our principals have done a tremendous job of of recruiting, interviewing, and getting positions filled over the last few weeks. Good. And I know y'all have been working diligently too, uh, always reaching out. So I did. I just appreciate everybody and what they've done to get school started this year. It's going to be a great year. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bradley. 
I have, a, I guess, an instruction question okay. from my board ground last week. Uh, I noticed that we are, um, I guess, for lack of a better term, implementing standard-based learning. Great. And uh, when I read that, um, you know, I, I was just concerned, had wanted to get a little bit more clarification as to standard-based learning. Right. I know it's, right. we had teachers to go through some training and this, my concern is, you know, as I've always stated, are we adding something else to the to-do list? But then when I look at standard-based learning, it kind of mirrors what we have been doing for years with looking at the standards, mm -hmm. unpacking the standards, and then writing our lesson plans from that. So how is this any different than what we've already done, or is it some and those are all good questions, and if, 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 if anybody wants to come from instruction that came up before she gets here, I will say this, that, you know, and, and Ms. Durham may echo my thoughts, but as the years pass, we realize a lot of times that many of the things that we've done forever foundationally with the different positions as people leave, we call that institutional knowledge leaves, and we have new people who come on board, new teachers, new principals, and they don't understand, like as you're talking about, many things that we've done forever that are good, that, that are just good practices. Mm -hmm. But when we look at, and I will, I, will, I know Mr. Wright has, she could probably talk for hours on this. But if, you know, we're very passionate about children, teachers actually, like you said, unpacking standards, teaching those standards, teaching with rigor, assessing those standards with rigor. But then the understanding that we all have. So as a parent, I should understand, like, not just that my child has an A in math or an A in English. I should, as a parent, be able to follow, and I know I'm bleeding more into standards-based grading, but as you're standards-based learning, you could get into standards-based grading, where as a parent, you know exactly where your child needs to grow and where your child has, uh, has mastered that content. And, you know, we, over the years, sometimes grading or what's happening in the classroom hasn't been interpreted that way. So, yes, it's... I'll give it to Ms. Durham, but no, it's, it's, it is best practice and what we've been doing, we get these back to our roots. Yes, mm -hmm. and it falls right in line with our differentiation and everything that we've done with differentiation and what we are starting to do with our teachers is really honing in on those standards and what does proficiency look like? What does it actually look like when a child masters that standard? And so then we have that consistent proficiency across all schools. So it becomes a fair and valid system. So no matter what teacher you have, which school you're at, we all are, a, are, are um, working towards that same proficiency standard. And then we are, like Sandy, Mrs. Strayer said, we are also reporting out to parents, this is exactly what your child knows and understands and can do. Our KUDs, which is right in line with our lesson plans, like you mentioned. And um, it's, it's a progress, a process that we're working with our teachers. We're starting with kindergarten. And I told the kindergarten teachers when we met with them this uh, summer, this is a year of learning, and we're just going to learn this year. That's all we're doing. We're not putting anything else in, in place that's new. We're just learning. We're putting systems in place that's going to actually help them. They're going to be part of every part of this process. They're going to give us feedbacks. There might be multiple iterations based on what their feedback is, but there will be um, teachers have total input and in, um, in our direction with this. And it is research-based, and we know that setting goals with students um, that has a huge effect size, letting students know this is when you students know exactly where they are in their standards, where they're supposed to go and where they're headed, and this is how I'm going to get there, their learning increases. And the conversation becomes about learning, not about, hey, I, I need to get 100 or I need to get an A. It becomes about, hey, this is what I know. No, this is what I used to know. I'm going to go here, and now I've worked and done this, this, and this to get here. So it's all about mastery, and the conversation turns into learning. And then that helps our teachers, too, because we can actually identify this is where my students are, these are where my students are, and this is what I need to do to move them forward. So the whole conversation changes not about grading but about learning. And as we change reporting and grading that way, we also have to make sure we're instructing that way. All of those pieces work together. We have to instruct and we have to assess and we have to report all that same way. So we're learning, we're working with um, Marzano's research and we are, we, our principals have learned, they spent some time in a workshop this summer. Our um, kindergarten teachers have spent time with us this year. I've spent time, my team spent time and we're just excited about moving forward in this journey. And, and, and 
and again, it goes back to like the why, and the why is because when children leave our system, they should have attained skills. It's not just an A. They can, they will know exactly what skills they have, and they can use those skills. And parents, I mean, I, I, to me, that's just so important that, that parents do understand. And as Mrs. Durham said, starting in kindergarten and just going back to this, and then building each grade yes. each year, mm -hmm. and people will understand the skills each child has. It's, it's, it is best for the children. It is not about a grade. Yes. Uh, so. yeah. And I wish the focus could stray from the E on a roll, the A on a roll, yes. the A B on a roll, because that tends to be the focus each nine weeks, and yeah. uh, parents Absolutely. seem to really take that, well, my child didn't make the A on a roll. Mm -hmm. Do you want them to always make the A on a roll? Are they being pushed? Like you say, it's about the learning because mm -hmm. students who make the A on a roll and have that great GPA when they go to college, you know, what our A on a roll be is not always consistent with what, say, Northern Virginia's A on a roll student is. So we really need to take that focus into learning and, and pushing those students to, to their ability levels. And, and quit focusing so much on that on a roll. And our, and our teachers could sit down at any given moment and say about every child in their in their classroom what skills they have or do not have yet. Yes. Uh, because mm -hmm. they always have the mindset that they will get there and they'll provide the scaffolding for them to get there. But sometimes the child himself doesn't know, and that's why it's very important. Is when you say, I mean, Mrs. Durham said it's <laughs> research based that you know children knowing where they are mm -hmm. and, and setting those goals how important that is, and they can get there too. But parents knowing. So yes, your child has a grade in math, but does that mean they can't mean? just skip count by twos? Right. But they can't skip count by fives. And as a parent, when you know, hey, my child's master skip counting by twos, but not by fives, and so what am I going to, you know, or they can't identify the letter M, okay, when I'm riding down the road, you know, I'm going to help them. You know, how parents are always asking how I can help. And with standards-based learning and teachers articulating that to parents, you know, and volunteers come, it's just so much simpler for all us. For Mr. Durham, like all the pieces fit together. So it's not really anything new, but it is our roots of um, you know differentiation and what's best for students and research base. And several of the teachers that I've spoken to this summer and that I've worked with, um, I remember one of them got on to our meeting and she's like, I'm so excited we're doing this. We're going back to what we are used to. I don't know if you guys remember those of us who have been around for a while. We used to have that kind of reporting. Um, some of us who were in elementary, we had that thick report card. And we got rid of that report card because we went <laughs> yeah. to a computer system and you couldn't mm -hmm. do it in the computer system at that time. And now Power School has also changed mm -hmm. where you can report that yes. way. Because we had, the, at all, yeah, we had big pieces of paper and you marked. I don't know if you kind of probably remember yes. when you were in school, the big pieces of paper that said everything, everything you could or could not do <laughs> yet. And yeah. the computer didn't allow for that. But now it does, and so we're going to just go back to reporting yes. it that way. Technology's on board with us. They're going to be working with us to set power school up like that so teachers can still use the computer to record their students' learning. I'm not going to call it a grade. To record their students' learning. Learning. And, and it's progress. much more information for students and for parents. Yes. Yeah. So, Sorry, I said a lot. I know. No, I I'm mean, very passionate just, about it. <laughs> yeah, and I know one thing you mentioned in the primary, so I, I guess my concern is making sure that we communicate this, market this, because yes. it, it appears the way we present, this is a process. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, and so, you know, we start in the primary, but, you know, secondary. We haven't got there where, yet. Uh, <laughs> so. You know, you know how it is. Yes. The panic button. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, we have a tendency to hit that panic button and you know, we got something else we need. <laughs> well, it's in the so, infant stages and we are starting right. with kindergarten and like I said, this is our year of learning. We're not putting anything into place. Right. We want to make sure we've right. got our ducks in a row. I don't anticipate us moving into secondary anytime soon. So right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. It's okay, thank you. I just want to make sure that Everybody knows that uh, we as school board members uh, love you and hope you've had a great summer and um, hope you'll have a great year this year. And if we can help you in any way, just let us know. Thank you, Ms. Dog. Uh, I want to echo, of course, some of uh, my colleagues who've made those wonderful back school remarks. You know, we're very happy to have you back. Very that our uh, professionals and their dedication uh, to that and you know, the HR department and trying to fill everything that all this uh, maintenance and trying to get our schools in, in order. Um, of course, I do want to 
echo the comments on Mr. Zayer. Um, I'm, I'm not going to belabor the point because uh, it's probably two most common comments <coughs> made of what's going on, and uh, let's keep it moving, Ted. So I'm grateful that everybody um, is committed to finding out what's going on and keeping it moving uh, in Henry County Schools. Uh, one thing I did miss last month, uh, by the way, we missed you, uh, Mr. Ocker. Mm -hmm. See, you, you left me to chair a meeting. Oh, you got it. But um, one thing I forgot to uh, say is I wanted to thank Mrs. Hatchett for her help with uh, the resolution and getting the delegates and all here and in order. And I thought that went very well. And uh, I was very appreciative of that. And of course, the media for coming and present and uh, also receiving your orders. But, um, I also want to thank uh, Mr. Menner, uh, came to the BSBA Conference on Education, presented uh, on our Career Academy program, so I thought that went very well. Um, but yeah, those are those are my highlights. I just want to say um, thanks again. I'm looking forward to this school year. I think it's going to be a great year. Uh, we've had some downtime for the last couple of years, and uh, I think we're ready to move on. A couple of uh, announcements. September the 1st uh, is our monthly meeting, and that's at 6. And make sure you put in your calendar of October. That's also an evening meeting at 6. Do not forget about the VSBA annual convention in Williamsburg. If you have not let Mrs. Ramey know you need to do that before you leave today because she has to have an idea of how many people are going. Uh, plus, we do have a very distinguished guest in our midst this morning, uh, being the president of the VSBA, who is on our board, and uh, we need to support him 100% in going to Williamsburg. Okay. All right, we need to go into closed session. We need to deal with the following items. 2.23711A1 of the Code of Virginia for discussion of appointments and separations of personnel. 2.2-3711A2 of the Code of Virginia for discussion and consideration of recommendations for special placement students, non-resident, and religious exemptions. 2.23711A8 <laughs> of the Code of Virginia for discussion of pending legal matters. And uh, I need a motion to go into closed session. So moved. All right, Ms. Flanagan made the motion. Uh, Mr. Martin second. We are now going upstairs oh I forgot to vote sorry about that all those in favor raise your right hand okay we are going to stay down here 